Hey everyone, and welcome back to this Pandas Tip series. Now, not too long ago, I posted a survey on my channel page, and I asked you which Pandas functions and methods you're most interested in. By far, Query 1. So today's video is all about the Pandas method, Query. You can follow along with the code I'm about to show you by visiting my GitHub page. Let's take a look. So let's get started by importing Pandas and aliasing that as PD. I'm working with Pandas version 2.1.1 for this video. I'm going to be demoing the query method in just a bit, so I need some data to work with. Here's some data that I'm just making on the fly, and it basically just contains three different columns. I have a height, a width, and a weight for four different objects. So let's talk about the basics of the query method. First, let's try to find objects where height is greater than width. So let's do this with a mask first, and then I'll show you how to translate that mask into a query. Well, what do I mean by a mask? Masks are one of the most useful and interesting things about pandas. You can reference the columns that you're interested in as series objects and just compare them directly. So I would just say, you know, height is greater than width, and that's going to give me a true or false value for every single row, is the height greater than the width? Then to use this as a mask, I would just copy this statement, reference my data frame, and put this mask in a set of square brackets. When I execute that, this mask allows me to produce only the rows where this is true. So that effectively answers our exercise. Find objects where the height is greater than the width. But we can also use the query method to do this. Let's translate this mask into a query. We would reference our data frame along with this query keyword. And now we'll pass in a string. What I want to do here is just reference the height column and say, is that greater than the width? So a couple things to note here. One, notice that the entire thing is a string. Two, I'm referencing the column names. So my column name is height, so that's what I type. And then I have some comparison operators in between whatever columns I'd like to compare. Let's execute that and it produces the exact same rows as what we got from the mask above. So using query is pretty straightforward, except for a few caveats. And the first is, how do you reference columns that have spaces in them? In this case, we'd like to find objects that weigh more than 50 grams. So how can we reference that weight column in a query string? Well, we write df.query like usual. Now, because the weight column has a space in it, we need to enclose its name in a set of back ticks. So this is the back tick. It's located in the upper left of my keyboard. And I'm gonna write weight space gram, just like the column name says. And then I need one more back tick to enclose that column name. Then I can proceed like usual. In this case, I want objects that are greater than 50 grams. So I'll just write greater than 50 and I'll execute that. So if you do have columns that have spaces, you'll need to enclose them in these back ticks in the query string. Ready to level up your query? Well, what happens when you need to reference an outside variable? Or maybe you have multiple requirements you'd like to satisfy. Here's how you can do that with Python pandas query. Okay, so let's try another query, but this time we wanna reference a variable. So here's our data frame again, and let's say that we wanna find objects that have above average width. So I first need to find the average width of these objects and then compare each width to that average individually. Let's see how we can do that. First, I'm gonna create a new variable called average width, and this is gonna be equal to the width column, and we're gonna take the mean of that. And I'll go ahead and print that out for us. It's 4.25. So if I do everything correctly, there are two objects with above average width, these last two rows. Those are the two I wanna print out. Okay, so if I were doing this with a mask, all I would need to do is reference the width column, and then say greater than average width. All right, great. But how can we do a query with the same result? Well, I'll reference my data frame and the query method, and I'm gonna to need to pass in a string here once again. I'll need to reference the width column for sure, but I can't just put in average width here because pandas would actually think average width is a column name, which it is not. So what I need to do is add one more symbol, and it's the at sign. Because I have this at symbol, that alerts pandas that I'm going to follow what comes after the at with some kind of calculation, some kind of variable that you need to go find in my code. I execute that, and we get the same two rows that we got from the mask. 
And it turns out that we didn't even really need to save average width as a variable. For example, I can do the query again, reference the width column, and just do this calculation on the fly, df width.mean. That works as well. So if you want to create a temporary variable, you can, or you can do calculations on the fly. Just make sure to put this at sign first, otherwise pandas is going to be looking for a column with that name. Okay, well what happens if you have multiple requirements? For example, let's say that you need to find rows where height is at least 3 and weight is at least 100 grams. Well, here's the data frame, and we know that we can find height being greater than or equal to 3 with something like this. That says that the bottom three rows satisfy that requirement. And we could also find objects that weigh greater than 100 grams with this statement. So two of those objects are greater than 100 grams. So if we want to find rows where both of these things are true, in a mask we would say df, and then we would have a set of parentheses. We would put in the first requirement. Height has to be greater than or equal to 3. Then we would say ampersand. Then we would pass in our second requirement, the weight column needs to be greater than or equal to 100. Okay, so that mask works and I get the two rows where both of these things are true. So how can I produce the same results with the query method? I'll reference my data frame and the query method. Then I need to pass in a string. So the height should be greater than or equal to three. Let's also try this ampersand to see if that works. The weight column has a space, so I need a set of back ticks and that has to be greater than or equal to 100. Awesome. So if you do have multiple requirements that have to be true, you can just write each of those different conditionals and separate them with the ampersand and just keep on going. You could add more and more conditionals if you'd like, and all those must be true to be printed in the output. Likewise, you can also find rows where either conditional is true. So let's find rows where either height or width is less than four. So I'm going to reference my data frame, the query method, and once again I pass in a string. Now I'll say the height has to be less than 4, or I'm going to use this bar here to represent or, the width has to be less than 4. So for each of the rows in the output we have um, either the height or the width or both are less than 4. Finally, one thing you should be aware of is that the query method does not make permanent changes to your data frame. If I take a look at my data frame, I still have all four rows. If I do want to make these changes permanent, and if I want to overwrite my df variable, I can go ahead and pass in whatever query I'd like. And I just need to add an argument called in place. I'll set that equal to true. Now, if I take a look at my data frame, I have actually filtered out all of the rows where height was not less than four. So if you do want to make these changes permanent, just add the in place option, which is the same as a lot of other pandas methods. So thanks for joining me today to learn all about Python pandas query. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any additional questions about query or other pandas methods and functions, let me know about those in the comment section below. See you next time. Here we go.